Do you know what these letters mean? Stick around and I will tell you about the shooting modes. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into the different shooting modes and what they are good for, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer. And remember, I post two videos a week, usually on Tuesdays and on Fridays. But let's get into the shooting modes. The shooting modes can be found on the mode dial on your mirrorless or usually also on DSLRs. Most cameras have also other shooting modes, but I am concentrating on the traditional ones. I'm not going to cover the art modes or whatever there might be other versions of the shooting modes on your camera. This is only for these four different shooting modes. How much do you use other shooting modes than these four? Please let me know in the comments down below. Let's start with the shooting mode P. If you use the P mode, which stands for program, the camera will choose for you the aperture and the shutter speed. And then you can choose if you use auto ISO or you set your ISO manually. I usually set the ISO manually and I use as low ISO as possible to avoid any extra noise in my images. Most photographers say that you should not use program mode and there is a truth in that also, but if you use it wisely, it's actually a pretty clever way of exposing your images. And you probably know that shutter speed also affects the, how the motion is recorded. If you want a motion blur, you have a longer shutter speed, and if you want to freeze the action, then you have a faster shutter speed. And the aperture is also affecting the depth of field. So if you want to control those, then program mode might not be the right one for you. But let me explain how to get better results with program mode. The camera chooses a, a combination that is about an average combination. But you can change the combination and that depends on your camera how to do that. On Olympus cameras I have set it so that I can change the combination in the front wheel and from the back wheel I use the exposure compensation. And this is very important because the camera gives you an average uh, exposure and it does not mean that it's the correct exposure. I made a video about correct exposure so you might want to watch that after this video. By using the histogram you can compensate the exposure to your likings and I usually like to uh, expose my images as uh, bright as possible without blowing out the highlights. And that can be done with exposure compensation, which I use all the time. So the exposure scale in my camera, it's just a start. It, it's almost useless in other ways. Use the histogram or the flag colors. But as I said, there is a video about that when I was talking about the correct exposure. Be sure to watch that so you understand the whole thing. But there is one downside when using the program mode and that is the way that the camera works. You, every time you start make, making a picture it will give you an average uh, exposure and the aperture value and the shutter speed value will differ. So you always have to start from, the, from scratch in a way to, and then you need to change the exposure to your likings. And let's say that you want to have certain kind of motion blur or you want to freeze the action. Then you might want to have a certain shutter speed and then the better way to do it is the shutter priority mode where you can set the shutter speed to be exact the one that you want and then the camera will take up take uh, care of the rest it will choose the aperture and maybe the ISO if, if you have auto ISO but as I said I usually have fixed ISO so that that does not affect my exposure on my image or the, it doesn't affect the compensation and also on shutter priority mode I have the exposure compensation assigned to the back wheel. This is very important because the exposure that you get from your light meter in your camera is only average and most likely it's not the exposure that you want because it's an average exposure and you want to expose the way you want because then you are in charge of the exposure not the camera. And I think that's very important in, in photography. You as a photographer need to make all those decisions that affect the photograph not the camera. The camera is only there to capture the image, image uh, with the settings that you have set to the camera. And then the aperture priority mode. What if you want to control the depth of field? Like I almost every time I take an image I use the aperture priority mode because then I can control the depth of field. 
And on this mode also, the camera takes off the rest. It will choose this shutter speed according to the available light, like in any other uh, different modes that I've talked so far. And I choose my aperture and then I will compensate the exposure again. And again, I have the exposure compensation assigned to the back wheel, which is, as I said many, many times, is the key to great images, the, is the exposure compensation. That's, that is the way to get the best out of your exposure and your image quality. Which one of these exposure modes do you use? Please let me know in the comments down below. And then there is this letter. And this is something that I think is overrated, the manual mode. I find it totally useless in everyday image making. But I will tell you when it's useful. Actually, there is two occasions when it's really, really important to understand the manual mode and what, what it is good for. The first one is when you're starting out learning about exposure. It's really a great and important thing that you understand what, how the uh, exposure triangle works where you have ISO, aperture and shutter speeds. You need to understand how all these are connected to each other and that's when manual mode is really important. And let's, let's have an example here. You have a exposure 1 60th of a second f5.6 and the ISO is fixed to 200. Then you realize that you have too much depth of field in your image and you want to have the f2.8 on your, on your image. And you see that, okay, that, that's, that gives you the fair and good amount of depth of field, the, the amount that you want. You have to change the shutter speeds to be shorter because you opened up the aperture and there's more light going in. So you need to have a shorter shutter speed, which will be uh, 1 60th of a second, you go to one, uh, 125 and you go to 1 250. And then you have exactly the same exposure as with 1 60th of a second and f5.6. But of course, as I said, the depth of field is different and also how the camera records the motion in, in your picture. If there is something moving, it will, will look a bit different with different shutter speeds. And that, this combination you need to understand. And then of course there's the third thing, which is the ISO, which we have fixed now, but you could also change the ISO. And then the second thing where manual mode is very important is when you are making images in a studio with flashlights or you're using flash outdoors then you need to have a constant or you don't need to have but it's almost impossible to use any auto modes because it, the camera does not uh, measure the flashlight. You need to have a separate flash meter or then you have to just bracket and, and make some test images and find out what, what is the best exposure. And you want that exposure to be constant. That's why you need to have the uh, camera set to manual mode and you're controlling the exposure yourself. And there could be an option so that you use the auto ISO when using manual mode. That could be a case. But then there is a, a bit of a problem. If you don't, if you cannot compensate the exposure, then you will always have an average exposure. And then of course, if you have uh, auto ISO, the noise level on, on each image will be different. And then the, then the image will look different because also the dynamic range usually is lower with, with higher ISO than lower ISO. So that's why I would keep the ISO constant. It doesn't matter what the camera is or what the ISO is, but leave it constant. But if you want to compensate your exposure by changing the ISO, then you can set so that you control the ISO from the back wheel. This does not work with every Olympus cameras. I know that it works with EM1 Mark II, but you have to check from your own camera. If you want to use this method, which I don't recommend, then you have to check out if you can compensate your image exposure by changing the ISO from the back wheel. Then it could work. And next, you might want to watch these two videos. They are about the exposure. And that those videos will help you to make better exposure in your images. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.